Very good morning, it's Penny Wall, the Black Pen. Today I come to you from Accra in Ghana, uh, in West Africa. For people that don't know, Ghana used to be called the Gold Coast and used to be a British colony before it gained independence, I believe, in 1957, thanks to Kwame Nkrumah, the first Prime Minister and President of Ghana. So I'm coming to you from Accra in Ghana today, courtesy of uh, CRDF Global. I've been invited to attend um, a session here where they're going to be discussing small modular reactors, SMRs. Essentially, these are like cooking pots for nuclear to power energy. And Ghana is going to be probably the first mover on the African continent with SMRs. They are partnering with the United States of America. They are partnering with Japan as well. Um, I come from South Africa. So for people that are not aware, ESCOM owns 80% of the power plants that power, or, or rather, ESCOM is responsible for 80% of the power in South Africa and 45% of all the power on the African continent, which is quite insane considering that South Africa is struggling currently with ESCOM and load shedding. And innovations like the SMRs are trying to give countries like Ghana and other countries that are hopefully going to take up the technology the ability to generate their own power. Um, there's a big push for nuclear. Uh, especially considering that I visited the Afri Russia Africa Humanitarian and Economic Forum in St. Petersburg uh, recently this year. There's a push for nuclear energy. France, I think, is one of the major um, players in nuclear energy. The United States of America itself is one of the big players. And of course, there's also a big push for renewables, of which South Africa, if you look at per year, uh, according to GDP uh, per capita, South Africa is the fourth largest investor in renewable energy president Cyril Ramaphosa was given 8.5 billion US dollars to try and push for more renewables even though South Africa is not a big carbon emission country unlike places like China Germany the United States of America but these are constant conversations around the energy space uh, COP which is the climate change uh, gathering is going to be in Dubai I think later on this year CRTF Global the people that brought me here and who I'm very thankful for is an independent non-profit organization founded in 1995 in response to the collapse of the Soviet Union and the threat of large-scale proliferation of weapons technology from the region. Meeting specific regional needs in over 100 countries across the globe. With support authorized by the Nun Lugar Act of 1991 and the Freedom Support Act of 1992, as well as private foundation contributions, CRTF Global embarks on bolstering the global scientific community and fostering alternatives to weapons research. Another thing that's interesting for people to not know is that under the apartheid government regime, South Africa was a leader of nuclear technology globally, a leader globally, not just on the African continent. And we had, I think about seven, seven nuclear bombs in South Africa, which were decommissioned before the apartheid government handed over uh, to the African National Congress and the democratically elected government. Of Nelson Mandela as well. In the past 25 years of the CRTF, uh, their work has expanded to address ever-changing global concerns, but their commitment to ensuring the success um, of, of their partners remains the same. They are leading provider of flexible logistical support, program design and management, and strategic capacity building programs in the areas of higher education, CBRNE security and non-proliferation, border security, cybersecurity, global health, technology, entrepreneurship, and international professional exchanges. So yeah, like I said, uh, the USA, Japan, and Ghana have announced the strategic co collaboration. This was back in 2022 to support the deployment of small modular reactors, SMRs, in the West African nation, which used to be known as the Gold Coast before Kwame Nkrumah and the CPP uh, gained independence. Ghana became the first independent nation on the African continent. Of course, there were other nations, I believe Eritrea is one, the most popular one being Ethiopia, that were never colonized. So they never needed to gain independence at all because they were always independent. And shout out to Haile Selassie, the most high, uh, the return of Jesus, according to Rastafarians. But from a colonized nation perspective, Ghana, the Gold Coast, became the first one. And Ghana is going to be leading in SMR technology. And I hope that you guys will look it up. I'll drop you a link to Wikipedia. I'll drop you a link to Wikipedia. So for those of you who are curious, who are interested, you guys can learn about some of these technologies and maybe learn how even in places like South Africa and other parts of Africa, in other parts of the developing world, 
people can use these technologies to better their lives. An SMR, or small modular reactor, is a proposed class of nuclear fission reactors, smaller than conventional nuclear reactors, which can be built in one location, such as a factory, and then it can be shipped, commissioned, and operated at a separate site. Think of the Turkish car power ship ships that are have signed a deal with the South African government that are going to be helping out with power in South Africa. By the way, in South Africa, our coal power stations have a capacity of 45,000 megawatts. Our total um, capacity, including renewables, nuclear, which is in Kuburg in the Western Cape, come up to about 58,000 megawatts. In South Africa as a nation, we only need about 35,000 megawatts, and we're currently struggling just to meet that, even though our capacity is at 58,000 megawatts which is why people like myself believe there are agendas out there, whether it is from the government of, a, of the ANC leader, Cyril Ramaphosa, whether it is from the West, commissioning for us to move to renewables, whether it is just rampant corruption and maladministration at ESCOM, or whether it's some other sinister agendas that are being pushed. We have capacity of 58,000. We only need 35,000, and yet we're struggling. And instead of fixing the capacity we have as a nation, we are pushing for renewables. We are decommissioning power stations. And sadly, there's a push to move away from nuclear, which has been proven to be a, a cleaner energy than some of the energies out there. Renewables, unfortunately, are not as strong yet as we'd like them to be. Solar, wind in particular. And these are some of the conversations that ordinary South Africans, ordinary Africans need to understand. It's not just for scientists. It's, just, it's not just for kids that study renewable energy and nuclear energy and coal energy, etc. It's for us ordinary people. Because electricity and energy is created by ordinary human beings like you and I. And there's nothing stopping you and I from learning how these things are done so that we can maybe, even from a small perspective, learn how to create our own energy. The small town of Urania with about 2,800 residents are now 50% off-grid from ESCOM because they have gone solar. Afri Forum, a non-profit organization which fights for the minority in South Africa, has been looking in things like SMRs, small modular reactors, to see how they can help independently produce power for some of their supporters as well. The term SMR refers to the size, capacity, and modular construction only, not to the reactor type, and the nuclear process which is applied. Um, and then there's some technicalities here for the people that are interested. I think this small modular reactor uh, can do about 300 megawatts. 300 megawatts is the size of the power that is uh, created by this. I think it's Royval. One of the power stations in Tswane, Pretoria site, does 300 megawatts. Um, we've got Kelvin power plant in Johannesburg, which powers Johannesburg with city power. I think they do about 1,600 megawatts. So this small modular reactor, which is like a cooking pot for nuclear, um, it helps to power energy, 300 megawatts. Like the car power ship, I'm not sure what, if it's, what, what its capacity is. I know when I was in St. Petersburg, the state-owned um, energy provider, so Ross Atom, which does nuclear in Russia, was also telling us they also do ships that also do nuclear and not coal, etc. Boring for some, but if you use electricity, if you rely on electricity power, if you want internet, if you want to cook on a stove, etc. Like, we need energy and we need to understand the energy wars that are happening in this country of South Africa. But yeah, I mean, I'm in Accra. I'm, I'm quite excited. I'm in Ghana. It's my first time in West Africa. Uh, we went via Addis Ababa yesterday in Ethiopia. Um, and I'm looking forward to some of the conversations and the engagements. I'm looking forward to learning myself because I believe I am a necessary voice in the world. I believe very much in education, empowerment, especially of ordinary people. And I'm hoping that as I learn about some of these technologies and how they work, and also learn about the, the politics around some of these things that um, I can teach some of you guys that may be interested, some of you that watch some of my content, on social media. Utsepo generally sends me headlines every day and I want to just go through some of the headlines that are so important that I feel so many of us are so unplugged from, especially in this constant misdirection world that we live in where mainstream media is constantly pumping you with music and entertainment and you're constantly fed news that is not actually adding value to your life. So I just want to uh, thank Utsepo Mateba um, on some of the headlines that he sends me every single day. Um, South Africa is struggling at a treasury level. The Minister of Finance, Enoch Kodongwan, has been speaking about how we don't have money. Some of the ideas they're looking into is potentially increasing VAT, of which at the time the Minister of, I think it was the Minister of Finance, Malusi Kikaba, uh, who's no longer a member of parliament now, increased VAT from 14% to the 15% we have now. 
you know, Kotongwan and other guys are looking into potentially increasing it to buy an extra 1% or 2%, which is going to frustrate South Africans even more. We're struggling with money. Our social welfare country is falling apart and the ANC doesn't seem to have a plan to help empower and uplift our people. Unless, of course, again, there is an agenda to say we need your population to be as undereducated, miseducated as possible. We need your population to be so reliant on the government that whatever we propose, they will have no choice but to support it. Whether it's a renewables agenda, whether it's a nuclear agenda, whether it's an agenda to close down FET colleges and skills development, whether it's us saying everyone must get a grant, whether it's ensuring that we go autonomous in terms of our businesses and we bring in artificial intelligence and robots and, and uh, automation, the people won't have a choice because they are so dependent and so psychologically messed up that they have no choice, which makes me really sad. ESCOM in South Africa has announced um, that they're going to be on stage six load shedding, which is quite sad. Um, Jacob Zuma took Cyril Ramaphosa to uh, court. His appeal has been lost. I think he's taking it to the Supreme Court of Appeal. These are not really the stories I'm looking for. Um, the death of the leader of the IFP, the founder of the IFP, Mango Sutuk has sparked a lot of uh, controversy, a lot of polarization in South Africa, seen by some as working with the apartheid government and as a, as a sellout, um, enforcing a lot of violence and murders uh, especially black on black violence of which he's pleaded that he was not one of the people that called for the violence but a lot of people still blame him for places like Moipadong, Togoza etc in, in Gauteng part of the places in KZN where there were a lot of fights between the ANC uh, and the IFP but he looked to do a lot of great work among Osutu. Leader of the DA Chris Papas of Umgeni um, offered I think three cows from the DA uh, for the burial of among Osutu Ptelezi. A lot of people seeing the clip of Chris Papas, a, a white gentleman. I think he's part of the LGBTQI plus community. I think he's queer or gay. I stand to be corrected. Speaking Isi Zulu, which is one of the things that people love about him, that he actually makes an effort, especially as a white South African, to speak the language of the masses of the people that he leads. He went and he, you know, pledged um, or sent his condolences and sympathies to the Bteliezi family and they gave those three cows for the burial of Umango Sutu A lot of people speaking about it now. Um, a lot of South Africans leaving South Africa because of the bad economic climate, because of load shedding, because of high crime, potholes, etc. The ANC Youth League with the new leader, I think is, I'm not sure what his name is, I stand to be corrected, but I know DJ Smoo interviewed this gentleman on the Hustlers Corner, please go and check that out. They are calling for a 4,500 Rand youth grant per month, you know, meaning that they are also, as the Youth League, which is meant to be pushing for education, for upliftment, for skills, for business, are saying, no, we just want the youth to be given free money, which I think is absolute rubbish. But they're calling for 4,500 rand. The ANC and the government are saying, look, we're already struggling as a country. Where is this money going to come from? Uh, pensioners have been struggling to access their grants in South Africa, the old age grant. Uh, there's, been a, there's been a glitch in the SASA system. Hopefully that will be sorted out soon. Um, very important for the city of Joburg. The city of Johannesburg begins Metro Police manned roadblocks to recoup 48 billion rand owed by ratepayers in Joburg. City of Joburg has lived up to its word and has begun collecting unpaid rates and services bills from indebted ratepayers at Johannesburg Metro Police Department, JMPD roadblocks. It's sad. People are owed 48 billion rand and everyone, including myself, would be like, guys, just pay. But a lot of people are not paying because they don't want to. They're not paying because they just don't have the money. People are struggling. Inflation keeps going up. Petrol, diesel prices went up by over one rand recently. The cost of food constantly keeps going up. And our government is not prioritizing developing our nation. Um, the ANC government constantly keeps selling off state-owned enterprises like SAA. They are destroying state-owned enterprises. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we are trying to build a country that is hell-bent on development. Even when you look at this renewable story, it's a story where it's like, we will give you money to not focus on developing your nation in the cheapest and fastest way possible. Makes me really, really sad. I want to go down to a story that really, really disturbed me. More than 2,200 people are reported dead in Libya after a storm triggered devastating floods. So the people of Libya, we send our sympathies, our condolences. I, I don't think we can understand. There was a story recently of a building that caught fire in Johannesburg with 77 people reported dead. You know, when you look at the people that were dying with COVID and those kind of things, when you look at the death 
the murder rates in South Africa, which have been reported as bad. If you look at the deaths that are reported with the Russia-Ukraine conflicts, you know, these numbers are scary. And this is Mother Nature. You know, we had floods in, in Durban um, last year, if I'm not mistaken. In Libya, more than 2,200 people reported dead after a storm-triggered devastating floods. Much of Derna, a city home to 100,000 people, is underwater after two dams and four bridges collapsed. The death toll from the city alone stands at more than 1,500, according to a minister. At least 10,000 people are reported missing, which is quite tragic. The storm which hit on Sunday is also affecting the eastern cities of Benghazi, Susa, and al -Marj. Very, very tragic story. As I said, I am in Accra, in Ghana, which used to be known as the Gold Coast when it was under the British colony. And shout out to Kwame Nkrumah who led Ghana to independence and named it Ghana. Very sadly, later on, he became an authorita authoritarian leader and was eventually overthrown in a coup when he was visiting, I think it may have been Vietnam or China, or Vietnam and China. And at the time, the military and the police overthrew him and they took over Ghana and they made it more liberal. Um, one of the sad things about African leaders, Kwame Nkrumah not uh, dodging the, that bullet, Mangosutu Telezi, only letting go of power, I think, in 2019, where you've got these leaders who come in, very brilliant, Robert Mugabe being another one. They come in, they make the country independent, they make it uh, um, a sovereign nation, they, li they liberate it. And then later on, they feel that they are the only people that are capable enough to run the country. And then later on in Ghana's um, newly found independence, Kwame Nkrumah created a one-party state where the CPP was the only uh, political party that was running and then when he was out of the country they overthrew him and i believe that he um, finished out the rest of his life in the country of guinea guinea Gabon, chad burkina faso uh, mali some of the countries recently that have overthrown their governments uh, in military coups um, some of them linked to france and there seems to be a shift in power and these countries some of them have uranium which powers the nuclear power in france and they are looking for better deals, not with the West in particular, but with other nations to say, we are tired of you guys teaching us, uh, treating us as this farm and this mine where you guys just milk from us, but you never help us develop our nations into something special. Will something similar happen in South Africa? We don't know. Um, are people going to be frustrated to a point where they want to overthrow the ANC government? Where maybe we have some type of a coup and people say enough is enough. We don't think some of these opposition parties the da the eff are doing well enough so we're going to take it upon ourselves to take over the country and to say we are tired of international companies running our minds but not developing on our country we are tired of international uh, companies coming and running our farms at large scale and they're just milking us but they're not really developing our nation we are tired of western agendas at the united nations at cop at the world economic forum coming to dictate terms for us and yet our people are becoming poorer and poorer. And when South Africa looked like a, a burgeoning nation with Nelson Mandela and the ANC in 1994, it looks like we are regressing at a very rapid pace. Within 30 years, our national energy supply, ESCOM, is struggling. It's got probably 400 billion rand in debt. We have load shedding, intermittent power supply. We are looking like just another African nation. We have got potholes. Our railway systems, which are meant to be helping to drive our economy, are being destroyed and more and more politicians are becoming rich and fat of truck um, contracts for trucks, trucks which cause accidents and where people die. Our roads are being, are being murdered. Our national broadcaster, the SAPC, is struggling and constantly needs to be bailed out. Our government officials keep giving themselves more and more money. They become rich. They become powerful. They never have to deal with load shedding. But the rest of the country is struggling. From 10 million social grant recipients back in the day to 19 million uh, just a few years ago, to now we've got 29.1 million social grant recipients, which is almost half of the country is receiving some or other grant in South Africa. And you can only receive a grant if you are earning under 3,500 Rand a month, which is very tragic. You know, we are becoming a socialist, social welfare state. And it looks like our government run by Cyril Ramaphosa currently, run by the ANC, doesn't even seem to be bothered as if it is something that is something to be celebrated, something that is being championed even by them. Something has to give. Something has to give. My heart goes out to the people of Libya. And of course, we send our condolences and sympathies to the supporters of the IFP, the families of Mangosutu Telezi. And we hope that more and more South Africans will wake up. More and more Africans 
West Africa being one of them where I am in Accra and Ghana, places like Nigeria. Some of these military coups, we hope that they will bring a rebirth of the African continent and we see a resurgence of Africa into becoming a powerful continent. You've seen what has happened with the East, with the Chinese dragons. We've seen what's happened with places like Russia. And we're hoping that Africa itself can de-link from the United Kingdom, from parts of Europe, from the United States of America and say, look, we are tired of being treated like children. You can become partners with us and we can work together. But stop coming to our nations, exploiting our people, exploiting our resources and not helping us educate our people in real skills, helping us develop first world railway, first world public transport, have first world economic infrastructure so that the people of Africa can thrive as well. Penuel the Black Pen, I'll catch up with you guys again soon. Have a great and blessed day. Cheers.